How you doing? Hear me okay? Awesome. We're going to jump right in. My name is Jason, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you can create some really stunning 3D web experiences with an open source rendering engine called Babylon JS. So specifically, we're going to look at three different things. I'm going to give you a high-level overview of what Babylon JS is. We won't spend too much time there. And then we'll actually do a demo and dive in and make a creation together. You can kind of watch me do some code, do a live demo. And then finally, I'm going to show you uh, some actual websites that are using Babylon JS to create some really stunning interactive 3D web experiences. So first and foremost, uh, what is Babylon JS? Well, its most simple way to describe it is it is a powerful, beautiful, simple, and open source 3D rendering engine for the web. It's all built right in, into the browser, and we've chosen these four words very, very carefully. Uh, it is a JavaScript library that's built entirely on open web standards. This helps make it really, really simple. So this, think of this as an API that sits on top of a lot of open standards. And as new standards come online, as long as you're using this API, you don't need to worry about what changes under the hood. We take care of that for you. It's a full-featured game and rendering engine. It has physics, animation, VR, particles, uh, ray casting, on and on. Basically, anything you'd expect from a modern game engine built all right into the browser. It has, it's really, really beautiful. It has advanced rendering and support for PBR uh, materials and shaders. Those are physically-based rendering. It's always backwards compatible. That's a core tenant of the platform, is that if you start using it today, and there's a bunch of new features and changes that happen uh, six months from now, your creation that you made today will still work. That's one of the guarantees that the development team has with it. And then finally, it has full support for GLTF objects. If you're not familiar with 3D or GLTF, think of this as the JPEG of the 3D objects world. So it also has a really strong and active uh, community. So there's a forum that where that's uh, every day, hundreds of people are coming on and asking questions and answering questions. We also have 250 active contributors. So those are people who are using the platform and then contributing back to its development as well. And it's, uh, we've had about uh, 20,000, over 20,000 commits throughout its lifetime. And it's used in a lot of places. Chances are you've probably stumbled across it before and haven't realized it. Uh, it's been downloaded over 500,000 times, used in productivity apps such as Adobe's Creative Suite, uh, Microsoft Office web apps, OneDrive, SharePoint Spaces, Bing. It's used in the entertainment industry. Dolby's used it in Minecraft uh, Classic. If you caught the 10-year anniversary of Minecraft, they released a classic version of the web built in Babylon. Uh, National Geographic, Sony, Square Enix, Ubisoft, Masters. And then some other fun ones, the British Royal Air Force, which we'll take a look at in a little bit, has a really great uh, website, Huffington Post, IBM, Toyota, and Wayfair. Okay. Enough about the overview. Let's go ahead and dive in and actually check out a demo. Let's see. Let me bring this up. No? Try to switch over one more time. Sorry, folks. You saw it? OK, there we go. So uh, this is a little hard to see, isn't it? Let's zoom in a little bit here. So we're going to look at three tools today to make a creation. So we're going to look at the playground. This is an area where you can code on the left and see updates in the 3D scene on the right. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a scene together. We're going to walk through creating a nighttime ocean scene where the moon and the moonlight reflects down onto an ocean, uh, an animated ocean. And we're going to do that pretty quick. Don't worry, this won't take too long. Uh, so this is the playground. This is a fully interactive 3D scene. You can see in here that I have a camera, that I'm adding a camera to the scene. I have a, a light, a sphere, and a ground plane. Now, the particular uh, camera that I have in this scene just basically rotates around. It's in a fixed position. I don't love it. So let's go ahead and start by adding a different camera. 
So we're going to add specifically an arc rotate camera. This is a built-in helper that Babylon has. And the first thing we always do in Babylon is we always name the object that we're, uh, we're adding. So we'll just give this a simple name of camera. Now the arc rotate camera, this is the documentation. You can find this on babylonjs.com. The arc rotate camera is a special camera that basically points towards an, uh, an origin, points towards a target, and no matter where you move, it'll keep a fixed distance and always look at that object. So you can give it two different angles, an alpha and a beta. And so I'm going to start by typing in an alpha number. Now, Babylon uses radians by default. I'm more comfortable using degrees, and we have a helper for that as well called two radians. And we'll give that one, we'll say 180 degrees. And then this is the beta number. This is the basically moving up in Y. And we'll say that this one is going to be, oh, 70 or so. OK, next thing is it wants the radius. This is the fixed distance from the target. So we're going to say 10 units. It wants the target itself. For this scene, we can just point it right at the world origin. So we have a helper for that as well. It is, we're going to create a vector 3 and dot 0. If you're familiar with game and rendering engines, a lot of this will look really familiar. And then finally, we have to specify the Babylon scene itself to attach the object to. So now when I hit play, I have a brand new camera that rotates around. And notice that frame counter up there is going to be hovering between 50 and 60 FPS for most of the demo up here. OK, so that's a good start. But I told you we're going to create a nighttime scene. So we're going to need a skybox. Now, for this, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go over to a, another playground where I've actually already got this. Just for the sake of time, I don't want to have to bore you with every single step of the way. But basically, what this is doing is I'm going through. I'm creating a box. Then I'm creating a material, giving the material some parameters and pointing it to a particular file, and then assigning that material to the box. And then once we play, we have a nighttime scene with the moon. And again, rendering pretty quickly. So this is a good start. We got some more to do. First problem that I'd like to com uh, tackle is the lighting. So if the moon is going to be the main source of our light, then we need this side of the sphere to be in shadow. And to do that, we're going to need to update our light. So right now, we're using a hemispheric light. And we're going to change that into a directional light. So let's actually get rid of these lines here. And we're going to use a directional light. And again, first thing we always do is give it a name. Next thing that it wants is a direction. Uh, we'll go ahead and create a new vector 3 for this. And then we're going to attach it to the scene. Now again, and just to mention, I'm more comfortable using degrees. So I'm going to. Uh, use my little degree to radians tool here just because it's super helpful. And we're giving it an x, y, and a z coordinate. OK, so we'll say we want this to be, I'm just basically taking a directional light and lining it up with the moon. We'll say negative 27 degrees in x, negative 22 in y. And we'll go negative 45 in Z. And let's play that, take a look at it. Now you can see that we've got active shadows. Again, rendering at 60 frames per second with the moon light that we've simulated here on this plane. And the sphere is in shadow. OK, what's up next? Next, we're going to actually remove the sphere. We don't need it for this scene. And I'm going to create a different type of a ground plane. Uh, I'm gonna, the, the reason I'm going to create a different ground plane instead of using this one is we have a special constructor in Babylon that allows me to specify the subdivisions. So I'm going to call this water plane. And we're going to say this is going to be a new Babylon.mesh. And then we've got a helper function here called create ground. And in this one, again, we've got to give it a name. I can specify the width, the height, and then this is the important piece I'm reason using this one is because I want to have some decent resolution to this. So I'm using uh, 100 subdivisions in here. And then I want to add it to the scene. Now, the reason I wanted this particular one is we're going to actually animate this mathematically with a shader uh, so that it will look like waves. Uh, OK, so now 
we'll play that. And ta-da, it looks just like water. OK, not yet. This is where we're going to show you the second of the three tools we're going to look at. This is under the gear icon here. There's an item in this menu called Inspector. Now, the Inspector is a fully visualization of all of the hierarchy of your 3D scene, so everything that's in here. So you can see uh, the, the camera, the lights, and the, the meshes that we've added. You also have control, uh, gizmo control to move, rotate, uh, and scale, as well as a whole bunch of other properties. One really, really cool thing here is if you notice on the bottom part of this window here, uh, as I select an object, it will change the properties and the attributes that you're seeing down here based on the selection type. So here we're seeing a bunch of mesh attributes because I've selected on a mesh. And if I pick a light, that will change to be light attributes as well. So it updates, and you can have control to edit right there in the inspector. Uh, and the reason I want to bring this up is I also want to show you we have some scene control. And I can render this in wireframe so that you can get a, gl a glimpse of that resolution that we needed to make this scene work. So that's our high-resolution water plane there. OK, we'll put that back to solid, get rid of our inspector. And now we're going to need this to start to look like water. So I'm going to create a new material. I'll call it uh, water material. And this is really, really exciting to share. We, I'm going to use in this demo something that is brand new to Babylon. It's called the node material. This is so brand new that it's only been demoed actually twice. It is available to use in the playground. This is all publicly accessible. But it's really, really powerful. And I'll show you that in just a second material, and we're going to attach that to the scene. Now, to show this off, I'm just going to quickly write two lines here. You don't need to worry about too much. I'm just going to set this up to kind of a default state. Um, and just so I can show you how it works. OK, so I'm going to run that. And now you'll notice, oh, I made a mistake. I created a material, but I didn't assign it to my water plane. So we're going to say water plane dot material equals water plane material. And now you'll notice that the moon no longer shines on the plane. That's OK. That's it to be expected, because we've assigned a new material to it. Now, this material I mentioned is super, super brand new, really, really exciting. Under materials, you have this water material here. And if you click on the water plane, you can see that that water material is assigned to it. If I scroll down to the bottom of this, I have this edit button. And this is where we're going to look at the third of the uh, three tools we're going to look at today with Babylon.js. And this is the node material editor. So the node material is a fully functional node-based system for you to create complicated GPU shaders without having to write actual shader language. So for someone like me who isn't necessarily super comfortable in low-level languages like that, this is an incredibly powerful tool. So you have the ability on the top here. Uh, these nodes up here, you can create vertex shaders so you can actually move the position of e every vertex. And then you also have the fragment or pixel shader as well. So to show you how this works is just an example. And this is all, of course, live linked to the playground. So as I switch over, you'll see that the water plane gets updated. OK, so to uh, show this off, I think what I'm going to do is cheat again for the sake of time. And I'm going to load in an existing shader that I've made to show you how powerful this tool can be. I'll replace those two lines, <clears throat> close off the inspector here, and we'll back up. And you can start to see that I have the beginnings of water. So it's looking pretty good. And I wanted to show you uh, inside our node material. Let's bring this back up real quick. Inside the node material, just how much you can do with this. So if I zoom out, you're going to start to see that this thing is a pretty big behemoth. It's pretty powerful, and there's a whole bunch of Gerstner waves happening here, which is pretty complicated mathematically. But again, all of this is something that I set up without writing shader code. And I did this, and we're still maintaining pretty good frame rate up there, about 60 frames a second, hovering about 55 to 60 frames per second. OK, so it's looking pretty good. Only a couple more things that we need to do here. I, uh, we don't have quite as, you know, we shouldn't see the edges of the ocean, obviously. So we're going to use some built-in cloning that Babylon has as well to clone this and duplicate it several times. So to do that, I'm going to create an array. We'll call it clone position. We'll leave that empty for the moment. We'll populate it in a second. And all I'm going to do is basically create a simple loop. Again, this is just all basic JavaScript here. 
And I'm going to loop over uh, this 24 times. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, I want to create a new variable. We'll call it water plane clone. And that is going to be, and then we're going to say the original water plane dot clone. And then I'm going to give this new object a name. So we'll say water plane clone. And then we'll just add the uh, number of the loop here. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to set the water plane clone's position. We can just do that by calling position and set it equal to our array and then the specific position in the loop. Now, obviously, I need to populate this array. And the last time I cheat here, I promise, I'm just going to grab these positions just for the sake of time. And now, if I've done this correctly, we have quite a bit more ocean, which is looking good. Last thing we're going to do, though, is it's not representing the light. You saw earlier that we had the light interacting with the scene, and we actually want this to interact with the light. Luckily, that node material that I set up earlier has something uh, already with uh, normals and lighting already set up with it. We just need to go through the process of actually attaching it. And we can do that simply all the way towards the end here of our fragment output. Instead of simply uh, lerping between two different colors, we're actually going to hook up all of the lighting and normal information. And then just like that, when I pop over, you've got a pretty active, beautiful water scene. And again, that's all running at a pretty good frame rate, all within the web browser. So that's Babylon JS. That's a little bit about the demo. I'm going to switch back over. Actually, I'm going to keep it on this. I'm going to show you uh, three different uh, places that this is used uh, outside there in the real world. So the first one I want to look at is uh, Wayfair. So Wayfair has used Babylon to build a 3D room planner. So this awesome scene that they've created basically allows you to s take products from their uh, website, create a virtual room, and see it what it might look like in, say, your room, or build out what your dream room might look like. A couple of things to draw some attention to here. You notice that in that mirror, you can actually see some reflection, and then there's specular highlights on all of the glass tables, and that's some pretty powerful rendering. This is all live right now, by the way. You can go check this out, um, which is really, really impressive. And in the future, Wayfair wants to also add uh, some uh, more real-time scene and model editing, uh, as well as AR integration to that. Next thing, I promise we take a look at the British Red Arrows. So the Red Arrows, for anyone who doesn't know, is kind of like the Blue Angels here in the States. It's an aerial acrobatics team designed to do really complicated maneuvers and show off the capabilities of the pilots and the airplanes. And they do some stuff that's really difficult to see unless you have a fully immersive 3D environment. And so this is a fantastic example of without something like this, it's very difficult to get across the complexity of the maneuvers that, uh, that these pilots are doing. Last one we're going to look at actually happened uh, earlier this year, the US Masters Golf Tournament. Uh, they actually used Babylon.js to create a pretty compelling uh, website as well where you could follow along every single shot of every golfer. So the, here's an overview of the course. We'll just pick a hole, let's say 15, and we'll go look at any old player who was in first. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop right into a fully 3D scene here that is interactive. So I can tumble around. And you can see where the tee box was, where the first shot landed. And you can t take that all the way up through where they uh, put it in. And then a really cool, amazing feature, I love this. We can zoom in. But I can also click on any given hole. And it will actually play a video of the golfer doing that shot alongside you kind of seeing that in the 3D view. So. That is a high-level overview of Babylon JS. Um, also, I should mention that, that uh, the British Royal Air Force demo actually was done in collaboration with Binary Vision. And then uh, the um, US Masters was actually a collaboration with uh, IBM. Uh, so that's Babylon JS. Uh, I encourage you to go check it out. There's a bunch of resources you have available. BabylonJS.com is definitely the place to start. There's forum documentation. That playground is a great place to jump in and get started. Uh, and there's a whole active community waiting to support you as you start embarking down this endeavor. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time.